Hey everybody. Today we're using R to subset data sets according to values of variables. Our main tool is going to be the filter function that's in the dplyr package. So I'm going to start by loading up dplyr with library tidyverse. That's going to load up dplyr as well as a number of other packages that are very, very powerful when using R. ggplot for data visualization, tidier for reshaping data, per for functional programming, and so on. I'm also going to load up the model data package that includes the data set that I'm going to be using. Um, let's just take a quick look at the scat data set. That's right, I'm talking about poop today. Here we have 110 observations, um, I believe from California, for poop for a lot of different animals, bobcats, gray foxes, and so on. We have um, month and year, site, location, and a number of quantitative quantitative variables relating to the, uh, the feces of these animals. And so it's easy to imagine a, a situation where you might just want, for instance, gray foxes. Or you might want a data set that only consists of observations from January and February of, say, 2020, say 2012. There's any number of ways we might want to subset this data. Um, again, the main command that we're going to be using is filter, and we can see the help file on that with question mark filter. The, um, the one that we're interested in is in the dplyr package, so I'll click on that. Keep rows that match a condition, and um, as with any of the R help files, you have a little bit about the arguments that you can use in filter, and at the very bottom, some examples. So let's have some, uh, some new examples. So the simplest thing you can do with filter is just to say I want a certain value of a certain variable. So for instance, let's just keep the rows in this data set that correspond to gray fox. The first argument for filter, like any of the verbs in the dplyr package, is going to be the name of the data set. So in this case, it's scat. And then the second argument is going to be the condition that you want. So in this case, species should be equal to, was it gray fox with an E? No, it's with an A. There we go. OK, and I just printed that out. You can see that we got a tibble. I want to point out a few different things here. First of all, notice the syntax on the filter command. The um, left side here of this double equal sign is a column name, and it's not in quotes. So species is the name of this column. The right side of that is going to be the value. And since here we have a, um, words, um, a character vector, we need quotes around it to indicate that uh, what's inside of those should be replicated exactly. Finally, in between, we have this double equal sign. And I think the most common mistake you'll ever make on filter is to forget to put a double equal sign here. The double equal sign is logical equality, so species is equal to gray fox. This is to differentiate um, the situation where you want to specify an argument inside of a command. So, you know, data equals scat, for instance. Looking over at the tibble, the output that we got here, the data frame, notice that we have 19 columns. That's the same as the number of columns in the original data set. Filter will never change the columns in your data set. It is only filtering by rows. If you want to mess with your columns, the command you're looking for is probably select. I have a whole video on that one. I'll throw a link up top. Also notice the number of rows here, 25 rows. That's less than the 110 that we had in our original SCAT data set, as you'd expect. And looking at the head of, the, um, of this data set, you can see that it is only rows where the species was gray fox. Great. So oftentimes you'll want to filter according to more than one condition. And the basic syntax is really, really simple. Um, you just separate your conditions with commas. I am going to swap over to the pipe before I write this next command. So remember the pipe in R passes the left side into the function on the right, in this case filter, as the first argument. So this is equivalent to saying filter of scat comma. So inside the filter, I just need to put the conditions that I want. So how about we do month is January and year is 2012. So month is quote January. And of course, I need that double equal sign. 
like I say, very common mistake to make, even for me, maybe especially for me. And then I want year is 2012. And I don't need quotes around that because that's just a number. And I'll just print that out as well. Okay, you can see here we have 16 rows. And so far we've just printed a bunch of January 2012s. Okay, let's see here. The other thing that you might want to do in terms of multiple conditions is an or. And uh, the comma gives you an and. For an or, we want to use a vertical bar. So maybe I'll just copy and paste this and replace the comma with a vertical bar. And uh, this time I'm going to save it. I actually want to view this. I want to be able to see both the Januaries and the 2012s. If I just see the head of the data frame, I won't see that so much. And uh, let's view scat small. OK, so here we have 55 entries. And you can see we've got all those ones that we had before, the January 2012s. But now we have April 2012s. And there might be some other Januaries from a different year here. That may not end up being the case. OK, um, let's see here. Looking back at the month variable in scat, it's pretty easy to imagine a situation where you might want January, February, or April. So. There's a couple ways that we could do that. I think I'm just going to start by copying and pasting some of this. So uh, we could do month is January um, or month is February, for instance. February. Okay. That'll give you all of the rows in this data set where either the month is January or February. Uh, if you do it right, you have to have month spelled right in this case. Um, you can view that. You can see January. You can see February. But this doesn't work. So the most natural thing to do, I think, if you're just thinking in terms of you know English grammar, for instance, would be to say month equals January. Uh, or February. And that's not going to work. R wants to separate logical conditions with the or. This is either true or false for each row in the data set, as is this. Down here, this is either true or false, but then this is just a string. So R doesn't know what to do with that. So an error. Now, this can get pretty, this or notation can get pretty tedious if you have a, a long vector of things that you're interested in. Month is January, February, March, or April. So um, there's a shortcut. Let's show that. So I'm going to, again, take scat, filter it um, for certain values of month, and I'm going to use the shortcut in. And so this is going to be logical where it's going to be true if the value in the month column here is in the vector I'm about to pass it. So the vector I'm going to pass it is going to be uh, January. And I'll just do January and February. And we can see scat small again. And you can see we've got January and February only. OK, let's do um, one or two with numerical things. Um, inequalities. So let's take scat. And um, I don't think I need to save it this time. I will do a filter on it. And let's look at, uh, how about age, the age of the poopies. Let's take only ones that are a little bit older. So let's take age. Uh, greater than 2. And you can see here we have 77 rows, 87 rows total, right? On second thought, I think I do want to um, save this as scat small so that you can see that the ages are all um, greater than 2. Okay. So here you see there are no um, ones or twos in this set. It's all numbers bigger than two. We can do greater than or equal to. 
I'll just illustrate that literally greater or equal to and we can do not equal to so let's do uh, all the ones that are not two years two years months they don't provide units on this so I don't know what the time frame is um, and that will take out all elements of the scat data set whose age is exactly two and yeah, there is at least one in there okay great um, the last thing I want to show has to do with, um, with missing values. So sometimes you might want to um, only have the rows where a certain value is missing, or you might want to eliminate the rows where a certain value is missing. So um, let's see here. There's um, a lot of NAs for the taper variable. So perhaps the scientists just didn't want to measure the, the taper on this. One scientist on the team, for instance, didn't get the memo. So um, you can't just do a filter. Here's another thing that doesn't work. You can't just do a filter for like equal to NA. If you try, let's take a scat small by piping scat into filter uh, diameter, or it was taper, sorry. You'll see scat small doesn't have any values in it. What's going on here is that R is trying to find all of the um, rows here where taper is equal to the literal string NA, where this NA means a missing value. So what you need in this case is um, a different command. So it does work. What you want and I'll just uh, copy and paste the start of this, is to filter it to keep all the rows where um, taper is an NA. So is NA is going to go through um, the taper variable, and it's going to return trues and falses whenever taper is an NA or is not. So in this case, we should only get rows where, um, where the taper variable is NAs. And if you look at that, that's the case here. So if you're investigating um, the values where this value might be missing, if you're interested in, uh, for instance, whether it's all the same scientists that refuse to do that measurement, this would be a good command. Uh, just to wrap up this vid, let me show you a shortcut for leaving out NAs. So first of all, let's mention the long way is just the thing that I just did with a not before it. So the things that are not NAs. And so now you can see scat small. The tapers are exactly the ones that are not NAs. Here we have 93 rows. The original data set, the set had 110. So here's the shortcut. Last thing I'll do in this vid. Um, the shortcut is to take scat. Actually, let me just copy and paste this first bit because I'm doing the same thing. So the shortcut is to take scat and pipe it into drop na. And all we need inside of drop na is the name of the variable. And so these two commands are going to be equivalent. And if I do another view command on scat small, you'll see I get exactly the same data set. 93 rows and 19 columns.